Hi, I'm Carlene with Embroidery Library. So you're looking at your embroidery machine and thinking, I wonder if I can make some money with that thing. A lot of crafters make things to sell, either on the side or as a full-time business. In this video, we'll go over some things to think about if you're interested in selling your embroidery projects at craft fairs or online. We asked our Facebook group about which items sell, what kinds of designs work well, and what other advice they'd have for selling embroidery projects. We got so many great responses. Let's get into those tips and tricks, plus a few more things to think about. First of all, what kinds of projects will actually sell? By far, the most popular items in our community were towels. These are just such a great project because they can be pretty quick for you to make, and they're a quick way for your customers to add some fun to their decor. And they make great gifts. You can keep it simple with just a design on a towel like this. Or you can dress it up with a little bit of fabric and trim to match the design. This is a great trick if you want to hide the back of your embroidery. You can stitch on a separate piece of fabric like this, then fold under the edges and sew it onto your towel. This gives your towel a nice clean look on the back. Our next most popular items were purses and tote bags. These can really be as simple or as complex as you want them to be. You can stitch just one design, or in this case a few, on the side of a simple tote. Or you can do a little more with the construction. This one has a lining that coordinates with the embroidery design and some leather straps, but it's still pretty straightforward to make. We do have free project instructions for this on our site. A few people also reported that zipper pouches sold well for them. There are various ways you can make these, but if you haven't tried our in-the-hoop zipper pouch designs, I definitely recommend checking these out. Another project to sell was rope bowls. If you've watched our previous videos, you've seen that these are super easy and fun to make. You can keep them simple with just rope, or you can dress them up with some fabric or other embellishments. Aprons were another project that quite a few people mentioned. These are kind of like towels in that you can keep it simple by just stitching on a pre-made blank, or you can get a little fancier with matching fabrics or other accents. And the last project we'll mention is pillows. Again, these can be as simple or complex as you want them to be. Even just a simple design in the middle of a pillow can be a fun way for your customers to change up their decor. We also asked our community which designs sell well. The first main theme we saw was beautiful or cute nature. Flowers, animals, things that are universally popular. Another popular theme was funny designs. A lot of you said these kinds of projects were your best sellers. The other recurring theme was special interests. This is a broad category, but it could include designs that reflect where you're from, designs about hobbies or pets, or designs related to the events that you're selling at, like a farmer's market or church fair. Our final note about designs is to look for efficiencies. Designs that have a lower stitch count and fewer color changes are going to stitch out more quickly and they can still be funny or beautiful or unique. When it comes to pricing your projects, there are a few things to consider. You'll want to factor in how much time you spend on the project and the cost of the materials you're using, including whether you're supplying the blanks or that your customer is. Also consider your overhead costs, such as whether you're working at home or renting a space. If the project is customized or if it's particularly difficult or requires some special expertise to make, you'll want to charge more for that. And of course, you'll want to do some research and see what other people in your area are charging for similar items to make sure that you're charging prices people will be willing to pay. You'll also want to give some thought to how you're going to display your projects. Anne-Marie showed us a great setup that included tote bags displayed on a hanging rack and towels hung on the side of an old crib. And Patricia mentioned that she likes to include some more involved projects because even if they don't sell as well, they draw attention to her table. Our last tip comes from Rhonda, who said it beautifully. My advice if you want to sell finished items is to find a niche. Don't copy what others are selling because it might not work for you, but try to find something unique and different. We hope this video gave you a few new ideas and things to think about. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments. Tell us what items you sell, what embroidery designs you use, how you decide on pricing, and any other tips or questions that you have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great machine embroidery videos. And check us out at emblibrary.com for amazing machine embroidery designs, plus lots more project instructions and resources. Thanks for watching.